Now the two pure forms of carbon that most people are aware of are diamond and graphite. In fact, they've been known to humans for thousands of years. Uh, diamond, the name, comes from the ancient Greek and it means invincible because diamond is the hardest naturally occurring substance. And graphite means to write in ancient Greek. And in fact, we still use graphite today for writing and drawing because it's the materials in pencils. Now in 1985, a third form of carbon was discovered and it has this beautiful structure or shape. It's called C60 or Buckminster Fullerene. Uh, C60 because it's got 60 atoms. And if you look at the structure, you see that it's got hexagons, but it's also got pentagons in the structure in exactly the same way as a football has got pentagon and hexagon patches. So it's a tiny football of carbon. Now you can make C60 by heating graphite. If you look at a piece of graphite, you'll see that the atoms are actually made up of hexagons. So the atoms form six membered rings and then these join up to form sheets of atoms. And you can see it's flat. In fact, if you take a hexagon sheet, if you had one the size of the universe, it would be flat. But when you put a pentagon in, it curves it up a little bit. And you put another pentagon in, it curves it up a bit more, and another pentagon. And it's amazing, but actually you can curve up any size sheet of hexagons with just 12 pentagons, and it will roll up to form a ball. Of course, there are other ways you can curve it up. If you can see here, the sheet has a different type of edge going along one side, so it's like a zigzag, than it does on the other side. This is, we call this an armchair. Now, if I curve the sheet up like this, you can imagine I can make a sort of tube. Uh, we can also curve it up like this to make another type of tube. And in fact, if, it, if we arrange the atoms so they don't quite meet in the same place, they meet a bit further on, we can make a third type of tube, which has got a spiral of hexagons on it. So by curving up a graphite sheet, we can actually make three different types of tubes. And these are called nanotubes because the smallest of them is a nanometer in diameter. That's a thousand millionth of a meter. So they're called nanotubes. And you can see I've marked on this one that the hexagons, if you like, are going along the tube. So this is one type of nanotube. Here, the hexagons, if you like, are going another way. And this one here is the spiral nanotube. Uh, to close them off, you'll see actually the pentagons are on the ends of the caps of the nanotubes. So we still need the pentagons if you want to close them up to make a tube. They're in very, very interesting physical properties. They're probably a sixth of the weight of steel but they're at least 10 or maybe 100 times stronger than steel. So they're going to be incredibly important for making not only small things, but probably large things as well. Also, the conductivity, the electrical conductivity, is a function of the diameter rather than the length of these tubes. So we can fine-tune the way we, we curve the graphite sheet to make different diameters. And therefore, we can make some tubes that are insulating, some that are semiconducting, and some of them that are metal-like, that conduct electricity. So these are going to be fascinating new structures for the future. They're a nanometer across, so we call them nanotubes, so they're part of this fascinating area of nanotechnology.